Hello all and welcome to another Holly's Pharmacy. Today we're going to be talking about something that is very close to my heart and it's all around brand. As you know, I love talking about brand, but today it's about finding your tone of voice. And actually, it is one of the most important things that you can do for your company. I don't actually know why there's so much brightness going on here. Um, it's like, I just don't understand. The sun is almost like changed. It's it's positioning in my room. How are you all? It'd be great to know how you are. Um, it's the Colour Friday week. Um, we are fully, fully busy. We are cracking on with everything. We have got an office move today. Um, not very far, just to next door. Um, but we have our office move. We're moving out of our cafe. Um, and we've got a trip to Norwich tomorrow where we're flying the campaign flag. And then we have Colour Friday on Friday and the awards next week. So it is fully, fully busy at Holly & Co. So today though, thanks to Dell Technologies, we are able to bring you this pharmacy and I want you to get your pens and pads ready because today is all about our tone of voice. And actually I would say that our tone of voice is as important as the other elements of brand at Holly & Co. And what I would hope that you would say, if you heard something, you would think that's so Holly & Co. God, I just don't understand what's happening with this sun. Can you see me okay? It feels like I've got some sort of weird light on my right-hand side of my face. Um, so we're going to not just talk about what you can say, but I want to talk about how you can say it. And I would love you, love you to tag in a friend who either has a fantastic tone of voice or you think could absolutely do with listening to this because they've got, got an awesome brand um, and that this is going to help propel them into the next level. So it's not just what we say, it's how we say it. So I want you to stay tuned because we're going to discover what tone of voice is and who's doing it well. Uh, we've got the amazing Kate, who's the co-founder of Sonda and Tell, a brilliant marketing agency. So you know how much we learn when anyone from marketing comes onto these lives. So I want you to join me because she's going to be talking to us about working with great great companies such as Rude Health or Bumble or Jigsaw and what companies do in order to lock their customers in just through the power of words. Um, as you know, branding is just one of my absolute favourite. Keep your comments coming, by the way, because I absolutely love, love, love um, knowing how you are, um, knowing what you're doing at the moment, understanding what you do with tone of voice. It would just be brilliant, brilliant to see. Um, so tone of voice, as I said, is one of those things for me that I wasn't very confident with it to begin with because I'm a dyslexic. And so anything to do with the words, actually, I was a bit petrified of. So tone of voice was always something I left to Sophie, who was my business partner at Not in the High Street. Um, and then um, I basically um, found my way, didn't I? I found my way when it came to... Um, uh, you know, being confident with my voice. And I think all of us, I think when you have, if you have imposter syndrome, your voice is really hard to find. Um, and that means sometimes when I spoke to speak to you small businesses and you don't think your story is very interesting, I think that's also got something to do with your confidence to tell your story. Um, so actually, as time developed and, um, and I went into Holly & Co., Rather than being embarrassed with my Hollyisms, that's what they're called. Um, so, oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's God trying to tell me something today. I don't know. I've sat here and done how many pharmacies and how many lives with you, and I've never had the sun in my face so much. But anyway, um, I, rather than being embarrassed by my Hollyisms, which are things that I say, and potentially sometimes they're my, myself, and because I have dyslexia, I've read things incorrectly then said them that, that way for mm, 30 years. And only after 30 years, somehow someone has recognised that I'm saying something wrong and said, do you really mean that, Holly? So, um, or I'll make up words because there aren't any words to describe what I'm feeling. So, for instance, I've said here many times, a muddly wiggle, which is my dog, Mudley, and his bottom when he wiggles. And actually, rather than changing that to the word of, 
eager or excited or all these sorts of things. We just kept the word muddly wiggle. And actually, that is part of the tone of voice of Holly & Co. Um, if I talk about Holly & Co and talk about more of the factual parts of business, so we're talking about the P&L, I um, started to talk about, well, what P&L. Okay, right. So we've got um, pears and lemons. Um, so peaches and lemons, sorry. Peaches, very sweet and it's all lovely. And lemons are bitter and taste horrible. So that's your loss. And so actually just having that ability to use words, but also the confidence to do this is so, so important. And I think that tone of voice is a way that if you think about innocence and you think about, do you remember on the podcast, he talks about on the, in the ingredients, it was two plump nuns. And um, they got into lots of trouble about having two plump nuns in the ingredients. I actually might need to go and shut my blind. But anyway, um, uh, no one's listening in my house. So it's just going to be me and I won't leave you. So that's fine. Um, two plump nuns on the ingredient list and they got so in trouble by the food authorities. And in their toilets, they have a, uh, a letter by the food authorities talking about <laughs> substantiating two plump nuns and and, um, whether they were allowed, what type of ingredient was it and all these sort of things. So it was very, very funny. But that was their tone of voice. That was their confidence. Um, and for instance, I remember that over any type of drink that they have. I, I couldn't name an innocent smoothie um, creation, but I can mention to you their tone of voice. So it reflects amazingly on your brand and your personality, your goals, your values, and it just helps you connect. So let me read out some of your wonderful comments that are coming through. For you by Kirsty, morning. Oh my God, tone of voice is so important. Louise Emily Art, hi Holly, can't wait to see you tomorrow at Norwich, nor can I. If I actually... Yeah, maybe Holly & Co team wants to text the founders to maybe come and help me. Uh, Lux Bucks, Colour Friday is a brilliant initiative and tone of voice is so important. Sling Aim Bobs, afternoon Holly, I've just got back from my nine mile bike ride over Welsh hills and I'm pumped and ready to work. My goodness, nine miles, congratulations. Number 95, Holly, you're looking glorious in the sun. <laughs> Thank you, I just... It's just quite hard. Um, Lillian May Studios, using my natural tone of voice rather than normal corporate business-like coldness has been a real game changer for me. Um, and I couldn't agree with more with you, Will. Multicoloured crochet, I love your Hollyisms. Oh, thank you very much. Um, mentally, fa uh, mentally Farm Lavender, love Innocence tone of voice and packaging. And that's the thing packaging is another place that we can put this on what about have you ever thought about um well let's actually get wonderful kate coming on here but i'm thinking about what we call the last mile so your package that leaves you or your service that leaves you you know i've always loved oh i'm going to bring on kate i've loved i'm, I'm going to talk to her about it i'm going to talk to her about it um i was going to say i love menus and I don't understand why menus do not have more personality in them. And when I go to a restaurant that has and has that tone of voice within it, I literally love that company already. But how come no one else does it? It's just crazy. So, Kate, you're joining us. Hello. Hi, Holly. Thank you for you? having me. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm just in a, like a sunblast at the moment. So I can't actually see anything. I don't even understand. I've done this for years and years, and just today, it's it's on me. I'm excited to talk to you, by the way, because tone of voice is one of my most favourite, favourite subjects. Um, you're from Sonder and Tell. Will you tell us about yourself and your business? Of course, yeah. So um, Sonder and Tell is a brand strategy agency, um, and we help brands tell positive stories, both to engage with their customers, but also excite and kind of energise their internal teams um, and we specialize in brand positioning so that's 
really looking at what a brand stands for, who they're for, what their values are, what their mission and their vision is. Um, and then we also work on tone of voice. So we'll, I know that's all of what today is about. So we'll go into lots of detail. Um, and yeah, we work with creative copywriting as well across lots of different touch points for different brands. Um, I know you mentioned some of them in your introduction, like Bumble, yeah. Rude Health um, and Lick. Is, 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 tell me what tone of voice is, because I think tone of voice sometimes, if you're not confident as a writer or, um, and potentially some people feel more confident in their creative visuals than they do their writing skills. Tell me about tone of voice and what it is and is it actually important? Um, to answer the second part of your question, yes, <laughs> absolutely. I'd be out of a job if I, think, <laughs> if I thought it wasn't important. Um, but it's one of those things that's quite hard to put a definition to because, and I think you mentioned it in the introduction, it's not just how you say something, but it's what you say as well. Um, so at Sonder and Tell, we always say that your brand is really your story. And that's the story of what you do and why you do it. And then your tone of voice is how you become the narrator of that story to the world. So it's how you deliver something all the language that you use to bring it to life um, and we often use a kind of example to sort of show what tone of voice is rather than just um, tell people what it is so if you imagine um, some of your favorite brands you can kind of imagine them walking around as human beings so let's say for example you get um, Oatly, Patagonia and Glossier walking into a bar. Um, chances are you can kind of imagine like what they're going to order, but also how they're going to say that. So um, I don't know if you want to have a go. <laughs> Holly, oh what, would, Patago okay, what so would Patagonia order? Patagonia, Patagonia, I'd walk in and I would ask the bar guy, um, what type of tonic water do you have? And um, is the glass recycled in the, in the you know, uh, is any of your glassware recycled? Yeah, exactly. They're going to go hard on kind of a planet message. So um, we always think Patagonia might go for a craft beer, but then they'd want to yes. talk about how like how breweries can yeah. do better for the planet. Um, Glossier, they'll probably go for like a Cosmo with fresh lime okay. um, and say something like, I'll squeeze. <laughs> um, and then Oatly would kind of over talk everything and be like, if you were going to guess my drink, it might be an oat milk espresso martini, but sometimes I go and eat oat milk ice cream in my pants and do something very weird. So you can, you can kind of imagine them interacting with each other um, and being brought to life as human beings. Yeah, that is such a great... So, so number one, everybody, if your brand went to the bar, what would it say? You know, what would it say? And if it wouldn't, if you have no idea and there is no sort of strong personality, probably you would say, number one, there is an issue. That is something to work on because it, you should definitely have your brand going to the bar and definitely ordering something, you know, unique to your brand. So that's a really interesting, clear way of saying this. Um, I think sometimes people think that tone of voices are like slogans as well and mm. that there may be slogans and that they're, um, maybe it's just not right for them to have a slogan. What are all the ways that you can use tone of voice? Yeah, so I'd say, I mean, your slogan, or your tagline is a really important articulation of your tone of voice. And it's one that's highly visible, probably one that's going to be on your homepage or on the side of your packaging. And that is sort of your like ultimate expression of your brand um, positioning and, and your voice. But actually, it's really important to make sure that your voice comes through across every touch point. Otherwise it can feel kind of inconsistent if you've got this kind of lovely splashy piece of marketing, but then um, for example, in your customer service, you take a very kind of formal business like tone, then that feels, it feels like you're two different people and, yes. and customers don't like the sense of that. They like, they like to feel like they're kind of with the same brand all the time. So um, we talk quite a lot at, Sonder and tell about micro copy, which is kind of those little moments that you can thread through tone of voice that when customers um, recognize them have a really big impact. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I really like a funny 404 page, um, you know, the yes, error page when you. Too. Them. Yeah, oh, me too. A good 404 page. And it's, it's so rare to find. But when a brand shocks you and a 404 page for everyone is you know, the, the, your internet's not working or something's gone wrong with their site, that's that page that comes up when there's something going wrong. 
And lots of companies just have a plain, disgusting sort of thing that come, I say disgusting, it's quite, um, quite violent of me to say disgusting that way. <laughs> but I get quite passionate about this because I'm like, why would you not use the opportunity to say something brilliant in this moment? You... Yeah, exactly. And um, who Pixar have a really good one, actually, Disney. Disney Pixar, I think it's one of their inside out characters, this, the um, sadness who's like, oh, don't be too sad, we're not here. Um, and you spoke at the beginning about Innocent, Holly, yes. and they have, they're really good at microcopy. So the, their really classic one is on the bottom of their bottles. It says, stop looking at my bottle. Um, and stop looking at my bum. Yeah, ex oh yeah, there you go. Um, yes. And a painter jacket kind of shameless product placement because I'm wearing one today, but their care label has been shared lots. And it says something just really nice, like wake up early, look after yourself, exercise first thing and have a bowl of Cocoa Pops. Um, so those like little moments, and it's been, it's been shared loads as well. So that when well, you get that's microphone. another thing, isn't it, about amazing tone of voice is in this day and age of social media, you know, tone of voice can be another way that you can grab people's attention. Um, let me read out some um, comments that are coming through. Sketchy Mama just designed quirky packaging stickers while watching this. Well done. Um, Piggy Designs, I've given up trying to sound or act like other people who I admire. It adds to my imposter syndrome. I can't be an imposter if I'm just myself which is so true. Number 95, I'm just launching close to the wire some Christmas cards on Colour Friday. Thank you. I took inspiration from your conversation with Innocent and have added an extra cheeky comment to the back. And it's just that, isn't it? It's those little surprising details. Um, Fenton and Yard Flowers, what a brilliant idea to think like this. A refreshing activity to see how you would go to the bar. Marigold and Lettuce, I do my best work when I've been to the bar. I mean, I, it's too funny. <laughs> tone, tone of voice is so important. We did a huge piece of work on this in my last corporate role. It's more than words. It's about how your customer, colleagues and partners feel about what you're saying. That's in it. Well, let's get back to that. And uh, Bergamot and Flo, this is totally relevant for me right now. What an amazing subject to talk about. Let's get back to Marigold and Lettuce's um, point there, because the words, the whole point of the tone of voice is that you, you do feel something. And w where have you seen this almost being important for a business? Because it can cause action. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, just to go back to that feeling point, Holly, there's a really nice a Maya Angelou quote that we use quite a lot, which is people might forget what you say, yes. um, but they'll never forget how you've made them feel. And I think that really sums it up. So it's creating that, um, yeah, sense of warmth, both for customers. And I think what that um, comment to mention is also like employees as well. So I think one of the kind of undersold values of tone of voice is that it really is kind of an expression of your, of your business's values, or it should be. And that when you know your voice, it means you kind of know who you are, you know what you stand for and what you stand yeah. against. And it has a really kind of rallying effect for your team internally as well. Um, just as an example, one of the brands we worked with, um, you mentioned at the start, Rude Health. So their kind of tone of voice is defined by sort of joyfulness and optimism and the bright way of being healthy. Um, and they use all of that language in things like their job descriptions, which are now, are you a glass half fuller who fills their bowl to the brim? So it's, yes, it's for customers, but it, ultimately it's also for your team too. And there's real value both kind of internally and externally for yeah. getting really clear on your voice and how you speak. Yeah, and I, lo I love that quote. I'm, ne I'm never a good quotey person because I always forget them and get myself tongue-tied and trying to, you know, remember who said them. But I love that one about what, you know, people will forget where, what, the, what actually were the words, but what they did do is they, it raised a smile. They felt some joy. And it's that joy in the smile that's raised that means that you become more considered in a purchasing environment. So this is the whole point, isn't it? it the whole point is you evoked something within me rather than being a passersby. And we always talk a lot here about Seth Godin's A Thousand True Fans. And it is much more important to have a thousand amazing advocates for your company than a hundred thousand passersby. And it's almost those words, isn't it? Those words will lock in the thousand people. 
Absolutely. And yeah, you're, talk, you're talking about um, being considered in a kind of market sense. And, you know, it's busy out there, like people have decisions to make. There's a lot of competition on shelves or on um, websites, whatever it is. And actually by getting clear on who you are, you're helping people decide between you and another. So another um, kind of case study we talk about quite a lot is the three sort of major dating apps. Perhaps they're, we could say they're Bumble um tinder and hinge they all have very different tones of voice very different ways of speaking bumble's obviously that kind of empowering girl's best friend that sort of helps you make the first move um tinder is much more about kind of hookups going out there having fun and exploring and hinge is well their tagline is designed to be deleted so they're there trying to help people find the one and as such their tone of voice is actually a lot more kind of romantic and storytelling and um that kind of rom-com side to it so you're communicating what you stand for and what you're about, but you're also helping people decide why they should choose you over other competitors. Um, so there's definitely a kind of market advantage as well for yeah. getting your tone of voice straight. And I bet you also, and I again, I can't remember, you might definitely have some case studies that you can, is we know the power of tone of voice when we know it's done badly. You know, because actually when you have businesses and there's one that's springing to mind, which I won't talk about, but that are doing things badly, saying the wrong things, it's so powerful as, as my, it's almost even more powerful, I suppose, than saying it in, uh, correctly, you know, just get it wrong. Do you have any examples of where people have got it wrong or, or said something that feels just so off? Yeah, again, maybe we'll keep it general rather than calling out yes, um, specific, specific call out. brands. But yeah, I mean, loads of examples. I think, um, again, one of your commenters mentioned authenticity um, and kind of being true to themselves. And I think people are just so wise to when people when brands use language that don't doesn't feel in line with um, them. So, I mean, if either because they're trying to copy someone else and I feel like definitely Oatly's tone of voice has been parroted quite a lot yeah. because they saw that it worked well for them and then they thought they'd try their hand at that um but I mean imagine if someone like m &S started sending emails that said like you okay hon <laughs> and stuff like that like you just you just yes. think they were really confused so yeah. I think when people forget their audience and who they're talking to um is always a sign of you know trouble there um, and again I think jumping on the bandwagon or feeling like you have to comment on every single event or kind of cultural moment that happens I know there was a bit of backlash after um, the Queen died that there were just loads of brands that had never spoken about the monarchy before perhaps didn't necessarily have Britishness or British traditions at the heart of their brand um, you know maybe the best thing in that moment was actually just to be to be quiet you don't necessarily yeah. need to speak out if that's if that's not a world that you normally kind of operate and add a point of view to um so that's yeah. quite interesting isn't it like tone of voice is also about being quiet as much as saying something you know it's actually about the place that you will use your voice and your words um and i think you're totally right and it's the, it's where we talk about greenwashing isn't it and we talk about suddenly brands talking about things in a way that maybe is copying another brand's tone of voice but in a subject area that's got nothing to do with them. It's, it's, it's actually just, they think it's popular, they see another brand doing it, so they think that they can um, literally cook, cookie cutter it. And this is one of the things for this small business community, it's, you know, every single person watching this should be a very, very unique tone of voice because by very nature, it's their story that should be coming through. If you flip it and say who's done it really well, we, we spoke about Innocent, that's a fantastic example. And I always use that as a thing. I actually think Bowdoin do it really, really well as well. Um, I, I remember, um, that, well, I always say that there's an example, I wrote it in my book, which is that they sent out a brown paper bag with their Christmas catalog. This is very, many years ago. Yeah. And, it's, and it was basically, uh, I think it said something for you to breathe in or I see I've just again I can't remember but it I, ultimately was for you to hyperventilate into when you open the catalogue right oh, and, and it was at, it, it was so funny but it was in Johnny's tone of voice which I think actually is brilliant and if you go really far back into Bowden's tone of voice it was 
it was really, really brilliant. Um, who else do you think does it well? Um, lots of people for lots of different reasons. I think for a brand that really knows and engages with their target audience really well, um, Starface are doing a really good job. So they are that... Um, brand for people who are suffering from acne and they have the little stars that you put on your pimples um, and they're speaking to Gen Z in a really really authentic way and it's a hard audience to kind of to yeah. get to grips with um, and I think they've done a good job of kind of empowering people that are having skin problems to feel a bit better about themselves but also tapping into that kind of internet language and using kind of meme culture in a very non-cringe way because <laughs> yeah. it's very it's very easy to go there. Very 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 easy to go into an area you shouldn't be going into but yes carry on who else do you think um so there's another brand called liquid death which are actually in the doing really well in the us and we don't see them so much in the uk but they are canned water and i think what's clever about them is that obviously if you think of most water companies they're in single-use plastic bottles um but because liquid death have kind of flipped that convention liquid, at the level liquid d-e-a-t-h yeah, exactly. Liquid, Liquid Death. Death. Oh, I've seen that. They've got like quite a punky, um, I don't know. Am I right in thinking that? They've got quite it's a... It's really... Yeah, strong. exactly. Their tagline yeah. is murder your thirst and it's like death to single use plastic. And they can kind of get away with that because it's a really challenging narrative. And they're, you know, if you think about most water brands, it's all about vitality and the, the ads with the Evian babies and Liquid Death are kind of doing the exact opposite with their product, but also with the kind of brand and voice itself. So it's a good example of, I mean, we get quite a lot of briefs with people wanting to sound more kind of challenging. And the answer is always like, yes, you can be challenged challenging in terms of your tone of voice but only if you're actually challenging yes. something at the level of your product or category um so i think they are kind of gold standard in terms of someone that's doing both really well oh it's um, such a good example i saw that the other day and i loved it and it's got this sort of like um so sort of punk rock de heavy metal like it's got this whole viewpoint yeah. i was like what is that and when you then understood what it was you just literally thought genius, absolute genius to do that. And it's, it, I'm, I'm interested, you get these briefs, we want to be more challenging. This is what we say here with our small business community. It's why your purpose and your values need to be so correct and at the heart of what you do. And if you don't have any, get some and understand what they are because ultimately your tone of voice and your whole positioning has to come from that point. You can't make up this is what we're saying, isn't it? The people who do it badly make up the tone of voice, but they're sort of, they're talking the talk and they're definitely not walking the walk. Totally. Like those two things have to be considered together. And again, it's when brands sort of want to be funny or they think they have to be amusing, but actually does that suit your audience? Does it match the yeah. product you're selling? Is that something like, what are you adding to people's lives? So we always start by kind of really getting into the, weeds of yeah exactly your point a brand's purpose before we build out the voice to to reflect that um another one that does it really well who we've worked with recently um i feel like i can talk about it because it was our amazing writer ray who led on it and not me um is a brand called wild nutrition so they make um supplements and are kind of experts in female nutritional health specifically mm -hmm. um and work with nature because they're food grown ingre ingredients and I think again nature is an area or sustainability where people can get quite sort of um, soft with their messaging and the kind of tropes there are about mother nature and this kind of caring um, caring body actually for wild nutrition we wanted nature to feel kind of really powerful and inspiring and like this force that can help you um, help make your body kind of function better so we pushed that and made it really quite strong and prevalent in the tone which was um yeah it felt like a little bit different to other things that are going on so can i don't want to put you on the spot because i mean i can't remember and is it can, can you give me an example of what that would what that would be so i'm remembering the um beginning i think it's the beginning of their impact report which again can be something that can be yeah. quite formal and quite dry yeah. um and i think the beginning of that is you are 3.5 billion years in the making a system of i think it's like 26,000 don't quote me on the numbers yeah. nerves um all made up so it was just making people wow. feel like these like really complex powerful um natural beings yeah. um but yeah so isn't it 
and everyone you know watching this this is the power of words i mean this is this is the thing that can be left out and you get your logo sorted and your brand and you've got your products and you've got your things and this is the power of it i'm going to read out um some um comments here if i can because i'm having to yeah. sort of come out of this sort of thing that's going on um, and it's just <laughs> getting worse are you yeah as well what it's like we've got i don't know aliens landing the big gift company uh, writing individual messages on our shop bags. Thank you for buying from me today. This means a lot at this time of year. Exactly. And, you know, you could probably, the big gift company, go even further and actually have an array of messages that you might give out that really give people different sort of um, thoughts on your tone. Uh, Nicole's Jungle, my 404 page, says something like, whoops, that's an error, unbelievable. Um, I Not hope that. no one needs to see it, but if they do, I hope it makes you chuckle. Now I've got to think, what do we think that he, this Nichols jungle does? Uh, um, plant, is it plants? Well, yeah. Or I'm thinking it could be tea leaves as well, you know, unbelievable. Anyway, N Nicole's jungle, tell us what you do. Cause we just guessed it there. Uh, sling a uh, meat bobs. Part of why I haven't grown my business and kept it small is because I worry so much about losing authenticity and closeness to my customers. They sometimes feel like my family, so it's hard to let go and grow. Do you think that I sometimes talk to people about why do we all think that growing means that we go to the dark side? I mean, you mm -hmm. know, it, it, I do believe it's about being a founder who really cares about the detail. And unless you're going to sell it to GlaxoSmithKline, I don't think <laughs> any of us have to worry about getting that big. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, only when you have I mean, about a thousand employees that things start to go a bit wrong. I wonder if it's just that fear of like losing control a little bit of something that you've put your kind of heart into. And actually... I, it is again quite common when we work with earlier stage businesses is that they've the vision or the tone has been um totally set by the founder themselves and then they've hired more people and those people are then trying to write as the founder and at that point it's actually quite useful to um step aside and i, I mean ideally work with someone or a, a copywriter or sondra and tell who can help you separate um, your founder's voice from your brand voice and then it becomes much easier for other people to take that on and write for you and evolve it themselves because it's quite intimidating if you come into a business and you're like yes. I've got to write like this person who's set, yes. set the whole thing up yeah and I mean it's bizarre that you say that we literally were having this conversation yesterday and you know for me at Holly and Co I was like actually that is the beauty of I hope for this company is it has a founder and actually until something goes wrong i need to be writing that copy or i need people to ha really understand what my tone of voice is and until we've got to that stage where we're so big that that's impossible that's the challenge you know you you, you know that is the challenge if you have like my company's called holly and co and so yeah. actually at this stage and we're a small business of 15 people you know i'm not you know the voice my voice is my voice and that's so important but i can see that when you grow that's where it becomes difficult but i think if you're always going to be in control of your business potentially that is a usp that you can hone into totally and it's that but i think the point is more that um it's useful to codify your voice even if it is holly's voice and it sounds like you have a little bit so you were was it muddy wiggle was that what you're saying at the M beginning uh, a muddly wiggle that's a muddly wiggle yeah you've got these hollyisms and yeah. if everyone on your team knows what they are that's that's fine i think it's more when the tone like exists in the founder's head and in no yes. one else's that it becomes yes. problematic we have a wonderful people. hollyism dictionary uh, amazing if, if anyone actually that. just looked at it they'd never trust me again in the, ever but um, <laughs> it, so it's it's just kept for the trusted people who understand um eliza eliza uk i always address my customers as the amazing brilliant wonderful on my packaging and i've had so many messages saying um it's made the receiver feel brilliant so i love that that's what they've actually written on the you know when they're doing the postal address that's, that's really how, nice. That's like how they're cool dressing. Title. Louise Emily Art, I also heard that you should be able to imagine your brand as a deck chair, the colours, accessories, and who would sit in it on the beach. Have you I ever heard that. that one? 
Me neither. I haven't heard that one. We've heard um, one that people quite like is imagine your brand as an airline and there's you could, what food you would serve, um, what the team would be wearing, what movies That's you'd play. That's so doing. cool. That's so yeah. cool. Um, Sparkles Eco Shop just spend, spent this morning editing my website. Thank goodness I took a break and tuned into this wonderful live. You'll be able to take some of this straight to your site. And Joe Jill, um, design maker, I'm thinking of rebranding in January. This is something I'm definitely going to factor in time for. And Bergman and Flo, I'm struggling because I'm an aromatherapy pulse point oil maker. And the wellness genre seems to can't so calm and serene and i'm quite bubbly and chatty um it, i'm struggling to strike a balance what would you suggest there yeah that's a that's a tricky question i suppose it depends on whether you yourself as the founder whether you feel like your personality is really important to the brand and you want to um feed some of that in but i don't necessarily think those things need to be um kind of in conflict with one another and you might find that perhaps in emails or to customers then then you might be a bit more chatty but actually when you're giving people the experience yes. um you give them that sense of calm think i think think about what it is that customers want from you and the headspace that they're entering when they're engaging with your brand um and perhaps it's a bit of a difference and that you're a little bit more kind of bubbly than than other brands out there and you yeah. should lean into that a bit because you want to you you want to either lean into it um in the right channels where you know you can almost imagine an email from that founder which people know that she's very bubbly and it's coming across but you don't also want to alienate anyone, do you? Because actually the wellness area can be a calmer place and when you're considering it. So I think it's it, do you think that you can have dial up and down your sort of tone of voice dependent on where you're talking to your customer? Absolutely. Yeah. Because I mean, I spoke a little bit about consistency and how that's important. But at the same time, flexibility is is super important. And, you know, you might have a tone of voice that's really punchy, bold, brave, and that's great for your website and bits of packaging. But if you speak like that, to someone in customer service they're going to get annoyed with you um so it's about you know building in those moments where you dial things up and down and also adapting to the times too and how people might be feeling which i think is something a lot of the challenger banks do quite well like monzo has this quite sort of tongue-in-cheek tone of voice but they're also you know dealing with finances which people mm -hmm. feel uncertain about especially at the moment so it's you know knowing when to be your most playful or punchy self and when to to be a bit more um yeah, karma and dial karma. it down. Karma. Um, wouldn't you love sending some parcels now? And I, I'll be sticking the Colour Friday stickers. Thank you. Um, that will bring a smile to people's faces. Well, we absolutely hope so. Uh, Liz Baldwin, how do big brands remain relatable and user friendly while maintaining their core values? How do big brands remain relatable sorry this is my select remain relatable yeah. and user friendly whilst maintaining core values i i don't that know sort of a question of scale as, yeah, as you I get bigger scale, do you need to become I, i'm just going to move this blinking thing can you just stay there because i actually now i'm becoming blind uh with the the sunlight oh here we are i'm just going to go into darkness and put an umbrella up um yeah i think that's to do with scale I think that's yeah, and again, I think it's that flexibility. So a brand like a Apple, they still have quite a particular tone of voice in their kind of ad campaigns, but at places, you know, it's not as prevalent on their product copy anymore. Um, and I think also the, the important thing is that you should never, ever slip into formality. I think sometimes when you know businesses get bigger and there are more people and you've suddenly got a legal team um, it's easy to kind of fall back on business jargon um which you don't ever want to do essentially if if nothing else with tone of voice you want to write a little bit more like you speak and keep in mind the human being that's on the receiving end of whatever they're they're reading um so yeah stripping human out language. human not algorithm to algorithm isn't it it's exactly. like that's the 
that's what we can um, get get caught into. Um, George Gred, it's all about being authentically you. Never be afraid to be just yourself. Be individual and unique and original. And and Dunder by Fafa, um, after a year of trading and knowing my customers, I've been able to brand my small business much better, which also reflects my personality. Um, can you tell me, what would you say, so you've given us a couple of tips before you go, what would be the top tips that you would have about finding your tone of voice so right now you're going oh my god this is sounding brilliant um they're going to turn off <laughs> what do they go and do do they go and go to a bar <laughs> <laughs> well, i mean that could be a good start no i think okay so i'll give you three tips and i think these three sort of sections of the tips um want you to be thinking about specific words because ultimately i think a good place to start is to get to three or four tone of voice words and then use them to kind of guide your language so first of all start with the customer um who are they and not just the kind of age where they live what they do for a living but who are they really what do they what do they worry about what do they lose sleep over um what's the role that we can play for them in their lives is it um that uh we are their kind of girl's best friend which is the bumble example are we this kind of um joyful force for them that gives them kind of a uh what am i trying to say a spark in their step that's not the phrase <laughs> a spring like in their step every day a spring in their step a sparkle um, in their step yeah so have a think about that customer the role we can play for them and a word to explain that um, and then have a think about your product itself and the USP. Um, what is it that we do better than anyone else in our space and how we can bring that to life? Um, for example, we worked with this uh, cleaning brand called Home Things who've kind of dehydrated the chemicals in cleaning and put them into these little tablets that you can put into multiple use plastic bottles. And we realized that the product itself was kind of dehydrated. So we made the voice has this kind of dry angle to it. So it's really kind of challenging. Oh my God, that's um, so clever. Yeah, and it's a fun voice and it sounds very different from anyone else in their space. Um, and you tell people that, is that the thing you're almost, because then you, you, it's almost part of the brand, isn't it? To say we're very dry because we are dehydrated. Like it's, it's, it's I think it's the, something they say internally. It's not something they say oh, to customers. But I say. think it okay. yes. helps yeah. them make sense of it. I love that. Um, so think about your customer, your product, and then finally your brand itself. Like, what do you believe in? What's the world that you're trying to build? And, and how, how can you do that differently to others? So, um, in, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't need to be um, a really big idea. It could be something like everyday optimism, which was an idea that we created for Kath Kidson, but it was that kind of positive force and something that they knew they wanted to um, give to their customers. So have a think about your customer, your product and your brand and try and map each of those points to uh, a word. And then at the end, you'll have a nice set that should be able to guide how you're thinking about yourself moving forward. Oh, that is just so, and um, I've just got a couple more comments. It's just absolutely brilliant. I could talk to you all day. Um, your agency couldn't agree more with this. Just published something on this topic today, something I'm so passionate about. Messy Me Box, feedback from my customers has been so amazing. They have said they buy from me because they love my products, but they also buy from me because of my personality. Um, That's flowers this is also true and very encouraging to keep going and how i like to talk to my community and the small indie and mighty we could all use sparkle in our step that, that was your <laughs> that point was your, a new term your catism right that's a yeah exactly right there. you know <laughs> muddly wiggles and sparkles in our step <laughs> there we go we've created some thank you so so much for your time today if anyone wants to get hold of you how best to do that um, so I would love it actually if people would if people would like to is to sign up to our newsletter. So if you go to the Sondra and Tao link in bio, um, there's a link there to sign up to the word and it's a weekly newsletter full of kind of advice on tone of voice, branding, positioning, interviews with different kind of marketing people and uh, reviews of brand work as well and think pieces from our team. So that's a great Amazing. way to stay in touch and start learning about brands yeah as well. gosh i'll be signing up i absolutely love everything you've said kate thank you so much for your time today i'm going to let thank you, you go to your words um and i really hope our paths cross again in the future me too um thank you for having me and, and yeah enjoy the sunshine i but i will <laughs> i will it, it won't leave me alone so this is one thing <laughs> take care kate bye-bye thank you bye, -bye. bye.
Well, it, you know, this is what we love about the pharmacy is that we basically get to speak to experts like Kate who really know what they're talking about. Um, and we get to explore areas such as tone of voice. Look how important tone of voice is. Now, you make sure you take Kate's tips, the three tips um, that she just gave us and really delve into that. Talk to yourself about, you know, who would you be if you were ordering a drink? What would your brand order? Um, how would they act? What would they look like? What would they feel? What would they say? And really think about your customer. I understand that we're all founders, but also what I really hope is that um, with Holly & Co, what I do, my tone of voice fits. Um, if I was going to be a chartered accountant, let's just put it that way, um, we would not be using my actual tone of voice for the brand because I would scare off everybody. And so that is what you've got to realise. If you are in an area that potentially your brand and your tone of voice um, does not fit completely, think about the channels and how you'll use them. Ideally and ultimately, you've built a brand that feels very you and your customers really um, are in line with yourself and your personality. And now it's time to shine. Now it's time to get it on your website. And I love the lines. What did Kate say? It was the sort of um, the minor, the minor words or the minor lines um, about basically those little things like innocent having stopped looking at my bum on the bottom of the innocent bottle or the 404 page. You know, the, the 404 page of websites broken. What happens when the customer goes onto your website, sees the broken page? This is the opportunity for you to um, do something with your tone of voice that is so utterly brilliant. Small India Mighty. Oh, I'm definitely signing up. Thank you so much for this. Uh, Luna uh, uh, Asis, uh, Asiata Art. Thank you. Signing up immediately. Eliza, Eliza UK. Love this. Thank you. Infused with kindness. Great live. Help me so much. Windmill Hill. Thank you. So helpful. Now, guys, remember, I need you to do something for me. It is... It is Colour Friday on Friday. I'm off to Norwich tomorrow to have some fun with amazing founders and spread the word um, on the campaign trail. On Friday, it's Colour Friday. What are you doing? Make sure you plan. And please, please, by tomorrow at, I think it's five o'clock, it's that moment in time that we turn off your ability to vote in the Independent Awards. Have you headed over to holly.co? If not, please do. They need your votes. Please, please vote. And you can do your Christmas shopping at the same time because we've basically created a list of fantastic people for you to discover. And remember, after Thursday, there will be the public vote. So you'll still have time. But listen, those small businesses need you to vote. So please, please do head over to holly.co. Um, and yeah, we're going to have some fun now. It's going to be about five or six days of full onness, um, but I can't wait. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Dell Technologies, for allowing me to talk to experts and bring this expertise to this community. We're so blinking grateful. Um, and for the rest of you, I hope the sun, like it has with me, follows you into the rest of your day. Lots of love.